Happy New Year from the Autos and Airways podcast. I am your host, Alex Shum, and welcome to season two of the Autos and Airways podcast. I don't know what the hell this little noisemaker thing is. I got it at a New Year's party I was at, and all I can say, this thing had to have been developed by a German person. I mean, there's no way an American could ever come, or a British person, or a, a God forbid a French person could ever come up with something like this. I mean, it's literally like a fucking turbine. And when you blow into it, it makes noise. And God, that is obnoxious. And I will never do that again. That is going straight in the garbage. Anyway, yes. So on today's episode, I found an awesome car on Cars and Bids. We're going to talk a little bit more about the BMW XM, uh, also uh, Lexus LFA Nurburgring edition that was recently sold for way too much money, um, Ferrari uh, unveiling their new logo for their 75th anniversary this year, and also some other stuff as well. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first thing, first things first, obviously, would be cars and bids. So the car I found on Cars and Bids is, I mean, it's just fantastic. It is a car that I that promised myself I will own one day. And it, it's this 2014 Cadillac CTSV wagon, phantom gray metallic, six speed manual transmission. It has the light titanium interior. It is fantastic. It only has 26,000 miles. However, it was in a pretty bad accident, but the repair bill was over $25,000 to repair this thing and get it back on the road. And I must say, it looks fan-fucking-tastic. This is the best. I think this is the best color combination you can get. Light light titanium interior with the phantom gray exterior is just absolutely beautiful. I mean, especially like in the sunlight, as you can see here, like that just, it's, it's, it is, it's so, it's just, it's perfect. It is perfect. Uh, Of course, you have like the satin gray wheels too that are just awesome. Oh, hang, whoa. I'm just looking at this now. This was sold brand new at Camargo Cadillac, which is three, four miles from my house. So this was sold. I remember there was a seat. This could be the car that I saw that they had in front of the dealership for months. And I would drive past it all the time. That, what a small world. I I haven't looked into this at all. I didn't look at the Carfax or anything, but it was sold at Camargo Cadillac. Right. I mean, I drove past that dealership every single day on my way to school when I was in high school. It is it's in the heart of Montgomery. It's right down the street from my grandparents. I mean, that's actually quite funny that this. Look quite literally perfect other than being in an accident. CTSV wagon was sold brand new right down the street. Uh, That's pretty awesome. Hell, it could have even been sold by uh, my old English teacher's dad. Um, Is my old English teacher's dad used to work at at this Cadillac dealer? But I will say that with the light titanium, that this is car only has twenty six thousand miles, and this interior is not looking excellent by any means. Just because it's it's really light. And of course, it's going to stain quite easily. But yeah, this car is extremely well equipped. Um, like you said, six speed manual. It's got the Magna Ride adaptive dampers. It has navigation system with a Bose 10 speaker surround sound system, heated and ventilated Recaro sports seats. Um, it's pretty much, it's got everything that you pretty much ever want. It's got Brembo brakes, uh, adaptive HID headlights, heated mirrors, it's got ambient lighting. Rear view camera, parking sensors, Bluetooth. Um, it's got the rear limited slip diff on star. It is a just a perfect car. It oh show me the car facts. I'm I'm interested now. I mean, that's 
it's funny that it was so brand new. And or hang up. Oh, okay. It was sold as a CPO car at at Camargo Cadillac. So it wasn't sold new. It was sold new in Delaware. Delaware Cadillac Subaru Kia Saab. That is a very interesting combination of dealers. But that's that's really cool that it was uh yeah, it was bought by someone in Texas and yeah, it was oh damage is severe. It was T-boned. That's um but I mean with the repair being over 25 grand, I wouldn't be too t- oh, it was in two accidents. Oof. Again, I wouldn't be too, too worried because it clearly looks like that the, whoever, this dealer that fixed it did a good job, but that does worry me a little bit. But at the same time, I mean, it, it's a CTSV wagon. It's, I mean, they only made a little over 1,700 of them and they only made like, they, I think it was like 350 ish were made in 2014 which was the last model year for this car and yeah i mean it's such it's such an awesome car is it the best looking car ever no but what more could you want than a six-speed rear-wheel drive supercharged v8 manual wagon the engine in this it's the lsa it's the 6.2 liter supercharged v8 makes 556 horsepower and 551 pound feet of torque zero to 60 was in a low four seconds um i'll never forget when i was younger when this thing came out i saw an episode of the american top gear they raced this ctsv wagon against a ferrari california and it beat it and it even beat the ferrari california around the track um granted the california was kind of like it was the entry level ferrari but still it was fat it was this it's a cadillac station wagon that's faster around a racetrack than a ferrari like come on what is there not to love it is such a good car and these engines are pretty good they do have some supercharger issues but this one it has been taken care of and it's warranted up to like a hundred thousand miles or whatever but yeah that car is very very special it's a car i i promise myself i will own one day even if i can't find a manual i'd I'd still get one with an automatic even though it's the 6l90 six speed automatic which is just fine it's not great it's not terrible but it's just fine um but this is uh this is a car that i would man i would love to own i would drive the shit out of it but i'd take care of it just because it's meant to be driven but since it is so rare i would still you know i'd I'd be careful with it but yeah that car is um it's just very special very special to me very special to a lot of people it's the only like performance station wagon ever to come out of the u.s and unfortunately there never will be another one (laughs) But yeah, it's just, it's, they're, they're fun cars. They handle well. It was, you know, GM did a lot of development for that on the Nürburgring. Um, But it's, it's, yeah, it's just a fantastic car that everyone wants one and they're going for insane money. That one was already up to $42,000 and it still has a few days left in the auction. So I'm actually very excited to see what, um what it sells for but i know it's gonna be quite a lot so you have to just have to wait and see but yeah so the next thing i'd like to discuss um talked about it a little bit the christmas special talked about it a little bit in um one of the previous episodes last season but now that it's officially been like all revealed 
It's the BMW XM concept. No, not to be confused with Sirius XM satellite radio. This BMW XM is an SUV with twin turbo V8, an electric motor, and they're estimating like 740 horsepower. And it is quite possibly the ugliest car I've ever seen. I mean, it's, it's, it's heinous. It is so bad. Um, it, this car proves to me that BMW no longer cares about the enthusiast market anymore. Um, you know, yeah, enthusiasts don't make up a huge market anymore, but BMW, I mean, that's kind of their thing is enthusiast cars. And this car proves that they've completely abandoned them. Enthusiasts don't want this shit. Um, again, for those that will be watching this on YouTube, this is what the XM looks like. I'm sure if, you, if you're watching this, you've already seen it. But my God, what on God's green earth is this thing? It is so... Ugh exude exclusivity yeah someone that buys this yeah it'd be exclusive because no one fucking wants it it's hideous this car this car was developed specifically for the chinese market because the chinese love these gaudy horrible designs i mean look at like any new chinese car um in the grill lights up and i have a feeling that's going to make it to production and she, oh god it, it is it's so bad. It is so, so bad. It does, it should not, it should cease to exist. Um, extroverted, expressionistic, a radically new concept that refuses to back down. Experience the BMW Concept XM, an electrified high performance luxury vehicle unlike anything you've ever seen. That statement is very accurate and it should not exist. I think that grill is so big. I can probably fit my fat ass head inside of that fucking inside of one of those fucking kidney grills. It is horrible. The future of M. Behold the power of progress. The first ever electrified model from BMW M draws inspiration from legendary heritage and, and transforms tomorrow with the most powerful drivetrain ever built by BMW. Estimating 740 horsepower and 738 pound feet of torque. Um, and it's hideous. I mean, they, they say this is inspired by the M1. And the only thing that is inspired by the M1 is the double BMW Roundel logos on the top. They, they're kind of, you know, they have this thing around. It's like trapezoid shaped. That's the only thing that is in common with the original M1. Nothing else is. Nothing else is. It's... It's bad. Oh, got ultimate power. The intense and engaging M hybrid V8 delivers the best of both worlds with breathtaking acceleration and precision power distribution on the spirited and comfortable drives. Ultimate power, yeah. Ultimate driving machine, my ass. BMW has given up on the enthusiasts, and that is not the right move. The new M3 and M4, great, but they aren't the old ones. Um, I think the last really, really good car BMW made was the previous generation M2. Um, that was my favorite BMW that I've ever driven other than the E46 M3. E46 M3 is my favorite. And my second favorite BMW is the M2. I've not driven an M2 competition. I've only driven the standard one that was out for the first couple of years. And I loved it. It was a fantastic car. Um, but this design, not for the faint of heart. Oh, dear God, no. Powerful, polarizing, and unapologetic. The BMW Concept XM blends the DNA of a dynamic sports activity vehicle with the intensity of a high-performance vehicle. The result, uncompromising style. The more I look at this, I want to get sick. Like, it's, it's bad. Boldly BMW. There's no mistaking the BMW heritage of this daring new vehicle, an aggressive tone established by the sculpted hood 
and large illuminated kidney girl with high gloss black elements and M style double bars evoking the spirit of BMW M. Slim mounted LED searchlights and vertical air intakes complete the effect. Why are you putting LED searchlights on the roof of this car? This thing has no off-road capability whatsoever. BMW SUVs are not good off-road. They are not designed to go off-road. They're designed, all, the most off-roading these things can do would be, you know, a dirt track or a very light trail in the snow. And they're fine for that. They're quite good. But other than that, these things are not designed to go off-road. And putting like off-road searchlights on it is just fucking stupid. It is fucking stupid. Um, it's power profile. The BMW Concept XM makes an, an enduring impression with its sloping roof line, signature cladding, and square cut arches framing 23-inch wheels. Connoisseurs will love the two-tone paint scheme in distinctive belt line detail and angular M mirrors. Ugh. <sighs> Enduring dynamism. A broad muscular rear design inc incorporating slim L-shaped taillights, a floating rear window, and a pair of laser etched rear round L's Give BMW Concept XM a signature sign-off. The dominating rear diffuser and first-ever vertical exhaust tips are a final signal of exclusivity. Oh, God. And now we get into the interior, which I will admit actually looks quite cool. Um, of course, this is previewing a production car that's going to go into production. I don't know if it's going to be at the end of this year or early next year, but it's going into production at their um, plant in Spartanburg, South Carolina, where they build every... SUV that's X3 and larger. Um, and it's their largest factory in the world in uh, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Now, I do think this interior looks quite cool. Um, it, it does look very production ready. I like uh, how things are integrated. It's kind of hard to see, but it's kind of similar to how BMW does things right now with Oh, like the climate controls being on the dashboard. These climate controls are integrated into the um, trim around the air vents. So it's if you're watching this, you can see where my cursor is. That's so it's still they still do physical controls, which I like that. I like how BMW is still doing physical controls. Uh, you can probably see it a bit better here. It's like right here, you still have all these buttons, and that is nice. Um, it does look very driver focused, the design of this interior with this large, you know, grab handle kind of separating the driver and passenger. But yeah, overall, and then th this very strange headliner that has these geometric shapes in it, like, no, that's not going to make it to production, but why? And then ugh, this is where it gets just weird. Um, an exclusive lounge. The centerpiece of the BMW XM is the lounge-like rear cabin. A deep bench seat with M Sport headrests provides the perfect perch to appreciate the sculpted prism roof with illuminated ambient lighting, quilted upholstery, and deep pile carpeting completes the feeling of exclusive and luxury comfort. This is it. Like, my God, the the combination of these geometric shapes in, in the headliner in this quilted velour type bottom half seat cushion in this like fancy carpet it makes it look like the tackiest nightclub in Miami like it is so bad now I know none of this will make it to production but regardless, it is so bad. It is so, so bad. Like, why? It looks like it looks like a cheap nightclub on the inside of this thing. It really does. It is horrible. It is so bad. And, I mean, God, the things I'd rather have than this thing include, well, I'd rather, I'd rather have, uh, you know, I'd rather have a smart car. I would not rather have a Tesla Model 3, but it's not that, you know, I would take this barely over a Model 3.
but I'd rather have chlamydia than this thing. Um, I'd rather have a brain aneurysm. Like I will say, I think whoever designed this was having a brain aneurysm when they were designing it. And then the BMW executives signed off on it because they were probably, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what they're up to, but BMW is trying to be bold and in some ways it's working, but not in the right ways, not in the right ways. So yeah, XM, shit, 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 shit. It should not look like that. BMW's is BM. This is BMW's second ever fully in-house M car. The first one, obviously, being the original M1. And then this is the second one. And they chose to make a fucking SUV. Again, this is... <coughs> excuse me. This is just proof that BMW has abandoned the enthusiast market. And it's sad. It's it's sad because... They, they just really fucked up everything. They just, they just fucked up. So... Yes, yes, yes. It's uh, <laughs> it's 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 quite bad. So moving on. Recently, a Lexus LFA Nurburgring edition sold for over one point one million dollars. It's green, which it's actually not green because every LFA Nurburgring edition could only come in orange, white, matte black, and gloss black. I I think. Um. But yes, it sold for over over one point one million dollars, and you know Lexus only made five hundred LFAs, and only sixty four were the Nurburgring edition. Nurburgring edition got an extra ten horsepower, um, and also had the fixed rear carbon fiber wing instead of the retractable one that the normal ones had. It also has lightweight BBS alloy wheels. They were very very cool. Actually, there is one you know roaming around here in Cincinnati. It's orange. I've seen it a couple of times. It is a Nürburgring edition. It is actually quite cool. So the, <clears throat> the Nürburgring edition that's sold. So let's, uh, let's pop this up here again for the people that are watching YouTube. Uh, yeah, it's um, now this is wrapped, obviously. But it's really cool. It has uh, 12,000 miles on it. It's sold for $1,137,968 for <laughs> an old Lexus. I mean, a 10 year old Lexus for $1.1 million. Um, Yeah, so uh, your paint, race yellow, which it's not yellow, it's orange, gloss black, matte black, and uh, white. So I yes, I was correct on that. Um, but it's uh, it's cool. Like I said, they only made sixty four LFA Nurburgring editions. This is the or so called race yellow, but I call that orange. But it's uh, it was a serious car. Um, I've of course I've never driven one. I've never ridden in one. I'd love to. But it was I mean, this car shows that I mean Toyota is capable of doing some incredible things. And you know, knowing that Toyota made this, and now that they sold the Supra out to BMW, it's kind of sad because when well, they could make something this good. They should have at least tried with the new Supra instead of selling it out to BMW. And now, like I said, I, I've driven the new Supra. I actually really like how it drives, but it feels a lot like a BMW. Um, in fact, that's probably the only enthusiast BMW left. It's not even a BMW. It's a Toyota. How funny is that? But yeah, this is it's insane how much these sell, sold for. And I mean, it, this car... At the time, was it, carbon fiber construction. This car was they started development of it in like 2001, and then they were going to put it into production. And 
it was going to be all aluminum and then they decided that aluminum's too heavy we're going to do all carbon fiber so they had to restart development all over again there was like several con- there were like three different concept cars and then it finally the, the production one debuted in 2009 it was on sale for two model years uh, 2010 20 or three model years 2010 2011 and 2012 and you know they it was limited to 500 units and it was a seriously special car. Um, based on all the reviews that I've seen, the only kind of real letdown is the transmission. It's got the six-speed single clutch, the automatic, which isn't the best, but it is still it's special in, in this the engine. It's a 4.8 liter naturally aspirated V10. It revs so quickly, it had to have a digital tachometer. And they always said, you know, that thing could rev from idle to red line at 9,000 RPM in six tenths of a second. Like, it was just so incredibly just a technological masterpiece. And they sold it for $375,000 and they lost money on every single one that left the factory. So it's, you know, but when you're Toyota, you can afford to do that. And it's a special car. And I, you know, it's something that I would love to try out just to experience uh, up close. Just the details of this car is, is absolutely, absolutely insane. It really, really is. But yeah, another Dr. Pepper break. It's almost gone. First time I'm not drinking San Pellegrino on, on the show, but it's a new year and yeah, different drink. All right. So the next thing I wanted to discuss, um, Subaru is going, is teased in STI an electric STI concept for the upcoming Tokyo auto show. Why Subaru? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing an electrified STI? I know, I know you have to, cause you know, fucking stupid ass governments and their stupid ass climate change policies. But regardless, the STI is all about loud, you know, flat four with a big ass turbo that takes a million years to spool up and then you get all this power. And they're known to be reliable until the head gaskets blow, but that's what the STI is all about. Kind of cheap speed and making it electric just takes the fun out of it. They're fun cars. One of my best friends has a 2016 WRX STI. And it's a fun car. His has a stage one Cobb tune on it. And uh, he put on like a race clutch. And that car is like the most diff. That I mean, I can drive a manual, no problem. But that thing is a bit, the combination of putting on a race clutch and then the tune, which makes the throttle so sensitive. It's almost kind of hard to just quickly stabilize and then release the clutch. I stalled that car more times than I'd like to admit. But, of course, it's something you'd have to get used to. My friend is obviously used to it. But, you know, I thought the normal STI clutch was pretty good to begin with. And without the tune, it, you know, it it revs a little bit. It's not as sensitive. But, you know, regardless, do what you want to the car. But Subaru's teased a high-performance STI EV concept. I mean, STI EV, that just sounds like some sort of STD that, you know, or sorry, an ST, an STI that just you don't want to get after some hookup from some girl you met at a club. Um, <laughs> that's uh, again, this is the Autos and Airways podcast, not the Call Her Daddy podcast, and we will stay away from sexual topics. Um, but but yeah, it's uh, it, it it's just <sighs> yes, STI Subaru Technica International, not sexually transmitted infection not that not that at all but yeah it's um and based on the teaser photos that i saw it looks pretty ugly it looks pretty ugly but 
Yeah, so next thing, moving on, Rolls-Royce. They, you know, recently announced that they are going to be making their first ever, like, fully electric vehicle. Um, it's going to be called the Spectre, which is a really cool name. You know, he's James Bond. Um, uh, I mean, I don't even know what the hell is a Spectre. Like, is that even if they're just Google search? Spectre definition. A ghost. Ghost. Of course, that makes sense. Um, you know, that's what Rolls Royce, you know, what are their cars called? The ghost, the phantom, and now the specter. It's all after haunted shit. So Rolls Royce has nailed Halloween in terms of uh, automakers. Um, but yes, so this is uh hold on i need to get off of that this is the uh like first ever like spy shots of this car it is a very large like gt coupe type thing it looks fucking massive and apparently it's gonna have split headlights which is interesting now granted the previous generation phantom also had split headlights but this is their first ever electric, you know, it's 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 not on a BMW platform. It is on the same um, architecture of luxury that the current Ghost in Phantom ride on. Now, remember the last Ghost, the first gen Ghost was based on the old BMW 7 Series. But yeah, it's... Um, it is an interesting looking car, and especially from the back, I must say, why is this not working? There we go. Of course, it's going to be getting suicide doors, just like, you know, every Rolls Royce. They all have suicide doors, or sorry, not suicide doors, because that's frowned upon, because, you know, everyone's so fucking sensitive these days. It's coach doors is what I think they're supposed to be called, or rear hinge doors or whatever. But I will say, I think this thing looks pretty sharp based on these uh, spy photos. Of course, it's on the back of a truck. I don't know if they're just transporting it or if it ran out of battery, because, <laughs> you know, electric cars, you know, but... It's um, I am very interested to see how this turns out because I think, I think it's going to be a pretty good looking car. I do. I think it's going to be very interesting. So yeah, that should we? That, I'm sure that will probably be revealed. Um, so they're saying Rolls Royce have the Spectre on sale toward the end of next year. So I'd imagine it will probably be revealed at the end of this year, um, if not early next year. So, and then also moving on while I have this up, the last thing I want to discuss, Ferrari 2022 is, um, yeah, this is uh, 75 years of uh, Ferrari. And they did this, um, let's just download the PDF because that's just going to make it, yeah, actually it didn't. So they have this new logo. Uh, they uh, Chairman John Elkin. Um, uh, yeah, chairman of Ferrari, John Elkin, um, revealed this logo for this year. 75 years of Ferrari. And he also did this um, sculpture of the Ferrari prancing horse, which I think... Yeah, I don't want to see a picture of John Elkin, who's like, he was like, he's like the heir to the family that owns Fiat. And he was like born in like New York or something. He talks like he's Italian, which, which he is Italian, but um, now I can't find it because they, but they did this sculpture. Here we go. They did this sculpture for, for their anniversary, and it is made 
Uh, I'll just play the video. There we go. Let's. Throughout 2022, we will be celebrating the 75th anniversary of the founding of our company, Bayenzo Ferrari. For this special year, we have created a special icon. Each piece of the sculpture was forged here in our factory and has been individually placed by my Ferrari colleagues. It is a symbol of the Ferrari spirit, which is shared both here in Maranello and by all our family around the world. It reflects the essence of who we are, our past 75 years and our future. It is a symbol of a company that, as our founder Enzo Ferrari once said, above all, is made of people. So, yes, everyone that works in the Ferrari factory put together this giant jigsaw puzzle that turned into this massive sculpture of the uh, prancing horse for their uh, 75th anniversary. Kind of cool. Um, but, yeah. So they did that, and, you know, we've got some new cars coming from Ferrari this year. Um, obviously, the 296 GTB is uh, the main one, and I'm sure there's Ferrari going to announce other cars this year. They'll, I'm sure there's going to be something really cool, but, yeah, we will um, we'll just have to wait and see. It is only the, the 2nd of January. Um, still have 363 days left this year. But yes, so well, again, thank you everyone for tuning in. Um, I'm glad I can make season two a reality because uh, season one did so well. And yeah, we will look forward to seeing you all on the next episode and I'll talk to you all later. Cheers.